Hi, this is Bob. Uh, this is the second segment uh, of the restoration of the Heathkit SS9000 transceiver. You're looking at a portion of the uh, power amplifier circuit board. I've removed the components from this area here. I found several resistors that were changed in value in that location. And over here on this other output transistor, I've removed those too. This tool I'm using here as a pointer is a dental pick. You can buy these dental picks at uh, your radio stores. Uh, this one here was given to me by my dentist. Uh, I was in there one day getting a checkup. And I said, hey, do you happen to have any old picks? And he said, yes. And I said, I sure could use one for my radio work. So he gave me this. That was, uh, that was oh golly, 10 years ago. I'm still using it. It's got a stainless steel tip. And one of the things I do with it I take these parts and I pull them out. I grab them with a small pair of uh, long nose pliers, heat the board from the other side with a soldering iron, and pull the part out like the resistor, pull out one end at a time. And then to clean the holes here, I uh, use this dental pick. I heat the solder again with the soldering iron right here at the side of the pick. And, uh, and then I just get in there like this, heat the solder with the soldering iron, which is going right now. And then uh, when the solder gets soft, I just push the dental pick through. Uh, being stainless steel, it doesn't stick. The solder does not stick to the stainless steel. And you can clean the holes out that way real easy. And you don't have to work and work and work to get those holes cleaned. So that's the way I clean out all those holes there. I've got a problem with this board. These two, uh, these two final transistors here are a matched pair. This one and this one, the MRF 421s are a matched pair. And the problem with uh, that I've been running into is uh, this one here has been running very, very hot. And this one here has been running very, very cool. And the problem I believe is these resistors, which are all different values I found. They're supposed to be 3.3 ohms, four of them. And the other four are supposed to be 3.9 ohms. That's a little less than 4 ohms. And uh, I found there are quite a bit of different values. I'm using a, uh, a Fluke 8050A digital multimeter here to uh, measure those resistors. And that's a very good tool for that. I do most of my work, however, when I'm working around the little shop here. Please pardon the blurry picture because I've got my close-up lens on the camera. But I do most of my work with this little uh, $5 uh, multi-tester that I got at Harbor Freight. I like these little things. They're quite accurate too. And if you burn one up, there you go buy another one. Anyhow, that's what I've been doing with this thing. I have uh, spent quite a lot of time. Like I say, please uh, ignore the blurry picture there and my shaking because I'm using a handheld Casio camera here. This is the circuit, circuit, I'm going to say circuit board. This is the chassis here and this is the area where the big, uh, the big uh, spill of uh, battery fluid was and it was all corroded. I've cleaned that all up. I washed it in the sink and I sanded it with 220 grit wet or dry automotive type sandpaper. And uh, then I painted it with Krylon Fusion spray paint in the copper color. And uh, so that's to restore this. This was all in really bad shape, corroded, rusted. I added a piece of aluminum here underneath the uh, transistor Q1 for a better heat sink because I know that that paint would, uh, would not allow it to have a good heat sink to the chassis. So I put that piece of aluminum under there to get a little better heat sink. So that's where we're at at this stage of the game right now, fellas. Uh, and uh, this is going to be a, a long project, I think. <laughs> I'm finding more and more things wrong all the time. On that uh, PA board here, for example, uh, I bought this uh, unit as a parts unit. And uh, all of these little uh, dipped mica capacitors in here were gone. Somebody had robbed them out of there. So it took me a couple of weeks just to locate all these capacitors and solder them back in. I was lucky though because the coils were still all in there. I don't know where in the world I'd get the coils. And the capacitors in here were missing too uh, on the other end of the board. That's 27 capacitors I put in there. I counted them. So that's where they're at right now is just slowly, slowly getting things back together. 
so that's it guys it's it's after the holidays now and uh, so we get a little more time to work on this 73s and good DX